and today we're going to talk about how to set up a semi-aggressive community uh, because semi-aggressive communities are one of my favorite types of aquariums to have because I like the cool, robust, mean types of fish uh, like South American cichlids, barbs, all those cool types of animals. So, so uh, semi-aggressive communities are pretty tough. They're pretty hard to do. It's like playing a chess game. You got to put the right fish with the right, you know, with the other pieces. So you have to put like couple cichlids, couple grommies, you know, different things. The thing about a, a semi-aggressive community is you get to put a couple fish that usually don't go together because, you know, they're either aggressive or they come from different parts of the world and stuff like that. So semi-aggressive communities are kind of like you're playing a gambling kind of game. So with semi-aggressive communities, what you want to do is you really want to pack them in there for one thing because these fish are just like chickens. No matter you know how many you have in there, uh, they're gonna peck at each other. But the more you have, the more the aggression flows around the tank. You know, So by all means, I'm not saying to over completely crowd your tank, but you're gonna have to overcrowd a little bit if you have want to, want to have a semi-aggressive community tank. So let's take a video of one of my semi-aggressive community tanks. Uh, um, it's got a couple South American cichlids and some grommies and some other dudes but let's take a quick look at it so as you can see I have a couple different uh, South American cichlids I got blood parrot cichlids tiger parrot cichlids a beautiful green terror cichlid um, and he's definitely the majority boss of the tank I got clown loaches that are pretty aggressive uh, what else I got tinfoil barb barbs are pretty aggressive because they're always little nippy dudes so Barbs you gotta watch out with. So barbs are perfect candidates for uh, semi-aggressive tanks like rosy barbs, uh, those Denisoni barbs or Denison barbs, the Roseline shark. Uh, what else? You got grommies, the opaline, the blue grommy, gold grommies, pearl grommies, like this one right here. Those guys are pretty tough dudes and they're aggressive. So you can add those to a semi-aggressive tank. Um, like I said before, the blood parrotfish, South American cichlids, great for semi-aggressive tanks. Blue acro cichlids, or I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it, but the blue acro, the electric blues are even better. Those are great for semi-aggressive aquariums. And then these tiger parrots, beautiful candidates. Uh, you can throw some stuff in like night gobies, which I have one in the back somewhere. All those are brackish, so they tend to like brackish water more, but. They can stand fresh water for a while too. Uh, silver dollar tetras, uh, bigger tetras, the Buenos Aires tetras are really good. Silver dollar is really good. Uh, black skirt tetras, serpe tetras are really tough little dudes. They're a little tinier, those see, I gotta be a little careful, but those guys, super tough dudes. Um, then once your tank matures for a while, you can throw some cool stuff in like fire eels or those freshwater snowflake eels. You know, you can throw a couple of those guys in there. Uh, you can throw in those armored catfish like uh, Raphael catfish, uh, Placostomus, uh, stuff like that. The thing about the semi-aggressive communities is you do have to pack them in there, like just like this. So the higher the count of fish in the tank, the more the aggression gets pushed around. Because you can see them be a little aggressive, but then another fish comes in and takes away the attention from the fish they were trying to fight with. That's how it works. And as long as there's enough movement, enough fish in there, nobody will really get beat up. So here's the problem though, because sometimes it doesn't work out. But usually about 60% of the time, it won't work out. Another 40% it will work out. So if you want to be humane with it, and uh, you know, you want to do right by it then you have another tank set up that's empty right and you can do two things you can either remove the really mean one and put the really mean one back later on or you can take the one that's getting beat up and just remove them that's basically it so if you want to be humane about it that's what you do it's that simple um and you just keep moving like i said it's a gambling game it's a chess game you put in you pull out whatever you got to do you know and that's how you do your semi-aggressive community.
and the reason another reason why i like the semi-aggressive community is because it's kind of like it never gets old you always have to be on it managing it because you have to see who's becoming overly aggressive like in this case the uh, terrorist cichlid can be a little bit over aggressive so i watch him if i have to change it i change it and that keeps this aquarium intriguing by always having to kind of look at it monitor it see what's going on it's a different aquarium every day in that way so it keeps it interesting it's not just the same boring fish every day you know things change it's like an evolving story basically and that's one of the reasons why i like the semi-aggressive community tanks Yeah, if you have any questions or comments, just leave them in the comment link. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to keep seeing more videos. I'll try to keep putting more videos out. But that green tear is just beautiful, though. It's a little bossy, but, you know, it never really beats anybody up too bad. So that's just something to keep an eye on. He chases, but, I mean, he just chases. So right now he's just really hungry. Let's take a feeding video of these guys. So I got a little bit of bloodworms here. We're gonna feed these guys some bloodworms because they love eating bloodworms. Like a little treat, you know. My friend Snowball's here enjoying her little dinner too. Hi Snowball. A little sugar glider. So now we're gonna feed these guys some bloodworms. Actually, I use my fingers. The reason I got the tongs here is because I'm gonna feed the fire eel too, but I like feeding these with just my fingers. Look at them go to town. And the best way to tell how your tank is doing with the semi-aggressive community is basically watch the uh, fins on the fish. If anybody's getting too torn up, then you know it's getting out of balance. And you either got to pull the bully or you have to um, take out the uh, weak fish. Otherwise, he's going to become fish food. And that's how you tweak, basically. Everybody seems really fine right now. We'll see as the green tear continues to grow if that stays or not. But usually if a fish grows with the uh, fish that they've been in originally, they're pretty okay with them for life. Hi, right, Snowball. Now oh, she loves that food. But basically, you know, that's my tips for the semi-aggressive tanks. You know, you just got to go for it. Semi-aggressive semi -aggressive communities are one of the most short-lived type of tanks, in my opinion, if you give up easy. If you're an easy person to give up on stuff, it's just not going to work out for you. But if you really want to do it and you gut through it, it can become something really cool like this. So you just kind of have to go for it, you know. In the, in the hobby, that's what it's about, you know. Uh, taking chances um experimenting i mean that's what i love to do you know experiment um but that's it you know if you want to do a semi-aggressive community you can a couple more tips don't get just a couple few fish like fill it up as quickly as possible let your tank cycle for like a month at least but then you know start packing it quick because the slower you pack it the harder it is to get fish to be compatible one of those strap Raphael catfish might come around the corner again right now. Oh, there he is. I love those guys. They have like crooked faces. They're pretty cool. But yeah, you just gotta go for it. You know, if you want to do it, you'll do it. If you don't, then you know it's fine too. You can do a little touch for tank or something. Not that I'm not gonna touch for tanks or anything or little planet tanks. I do them too, you know, it's no big deal. Let's get some more blood worms. They are still hungry. You guys are hungry, huh? That tinfoil barb's awesome. I might get a couple more tinfoil barbs and put them in here. Like the silver and red one and the silver and black one another thing what else can i add here obviously this is a 75 gallon tank and it's too small 
for now. I mean, not for now, but later on it will be, but that'll be a while, so. But what else can I put in here, you know? Definitely thinking about getting more claw moaches. But those guys are a little bit of a tackle themselves sometimes because they're really easy to catch eggs. So you definitely got to quarantine those guys. Give me some more catfish. Uh, definitely more tinfoil barbs, though. That's for sure. At least two more. And definitely some more little catfish to put at the bottom. Yeah, we'll see. And I'll give you an update when that time comes. But now I'm going to try to feed the fire eel. He's eating, but it's just hard because all these little dudes gang up on him. With that being said, that is my video for today. If you want me to talk about anything in particular, comment below. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos. And so you can see, keep seeing Snowball. Uh, she's a little shy right now. But yeah, uh, like, comment, subscribe, and let me know what other cool videos you want me to post. Uh, stay tuned and uh, happy fish keeping, guys.